When I first started learning Python and I had my first taste of automation, I couldn't stop seeing opportunities in ways I could make my work life better. And in this video, I want to show you how easy it can be and how you can apply it to your situation. I want to show you how I automated the simple but time consuming task using the Shopify API, recreating the code I wrote all those years ago. In fact, the original script was the building blocks of code that I still run today. It's short, it's sweet, but it's very effective. And I'll show you exactly how to achieve what I did so you can hopefully apply it to your work. Python is an excellent language at working with JSON APIs. And in just a few lines of code, we can request and pass a REST API for data. All modern systems have an API available. And in the case of Shopify, it's very easy to set up and use. And by being careful with permissions, we can limit the scope so we have access to just read only. So there's no way we can actually break anything. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Like with all things that you're trying to learn, you just don't know what you don't know. And as I progress as a freelancer and self-taught developer, I'm really keen on learning new business skills specifically around pricing and negotiation. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives and has thousands of classes from industry experts across freelance, productivity, film and business to name just a few. Ready to help you level up your skills, boost your career or take that side project up to the next level. If you aren't sure where to start, there are specifically designed learning paths that are curated lists of videos for you to take in order to go from beginner to master. And in fact, the learning path pricing and negotiation for creative freelancers is the class I'm taking this summer to help understand more about initial negotiations for my services and where I can improve my pricing model and managing client expectations. But if you've got your business side all buttoned up, there's other great classes on film, animation, editing, entrepreneurship for you to get stuck into. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today. So imagine we are selling a specific project that required some manual intervention of some kind and we need to collect extra information, confirm details with customers, etc, etc. Hypothetical situation, but quite relevant. This means that each day someone needs to look through all the orders on the store and check to see if anyone has bought this item then take their order details and pass it on or do whatever needs to happen. Things like this are just prime automation targets. So let me show you how I did it. So the first page we're going to come to is the Shopify REST admin API. We're going to be referencing this, um, but first we need a store to work with. Of course, you have your own store. You can use that. But if you want a store that you can test with, you can create a free Shopify partner account and create some development stores that you can actually then log into and, you know, do whatever you need to do, test your apps, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'd recommend doing that, especially when you're testing. So I have a couple of stores here. I'm going to open up this one. And I'll show you the problem that I want to solve. So there's only going to be a few orders on here. But just imagine there's lots, of course, hopefully there's lots on your store. And what I want to do is I want to find everybody that's ordered this item that is unfulfilled. And I want to get their email address out of here. Now, I could easily just do this, paste it in here, click this and hit export. But if you've got lots of orders on Shopify, this will then have to be emailed to you. You'll have to open it and you'll have to then chop all the data out that you don't want because it will be a full export. And if you have to do this over multiple stores, it comes quite time consuming, uh, especially if you then need to do anything with that data. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a script that's going to just do that for us. Now I need you to just be a little bit more open-minded to think of what you could achieve rather than like this is the be all and end all. But we need to create an application to do this. So we're gonna to go to apps and then app and sales channels and then develop apps here. So you'll see I have two already created. You'll probably have none or maybe one or two. So we do create app, give it a name, whatever you wanna call it and then create application. From here, we're going to get the option to check out all of the actual API scopes we're going to give access to. So we're going to commit configure admin API scopes. Now, when you're testing, I suggest you just select all of these because it will be a pain if um, on your development store to have to go back and redo any of these. However, when it comes to actually deploying the script or writing a script that you're going to run every day, I would only use the um, actual read um, uh, a scope that you need and it will tell you under here whichever one of these fields that you want to actually get access to for example order in our case it will tell you right here multiple scopes need refer to each endpoint for access scope required so if we were to go to this one it will tell you somewhere around here which 
um, access scopes you need, orders and marketplace orders. So that's worth bearing in mind. So you tick through whatever ones of these you need. So I'm just gonna do orders and we'll do read, uh, read here, I think it's said, we'll just do that for the moment. I'll click read on all of these. So now we can read all of these from here. We want to scroll down, hit save. And once that's done, we now have the option up here to install the app, which we're gonna click yes, and we're gonna install this app onto our store. This is going to now give us this page where we can see everything. Now, this is the API token that we're gonna want. So once you click reveal token once, obviously it's only gonna reveal it to you once. So you need to bear that in mind and you need to save it somewhere safe. If anyone gets hold of this, they can obviously access based on the scope that you've created anything on your store, so keep it safe. These are not relevant to what we're gonna be doing, um, but they're worth knowing that they're there. So click reveal token once, copy it and save it somewhere nice and safe. If you ever wanna stop the app working, you can just do uninstall app. And when you do this, you can still just reinstall it again if you need to uh, under apps and sales channels, and you can just recreate it and get a new key, etc., etc. So now that's done, I'm gonna come over to my uh, code editor, my terminal. I've created a new directory here. I have Git uh, running on this. You obviously don't need to do that if you don't want to. And I have a virtual environment and I've done pip install and we're using requests. And I'm also going to be using rich. I use rich just because I run everything in my terminal. It just makes it easier to read large chunks of JSON data within that. You don't need rich, it's just, nice to have you basically just need requests once you've done installing those go ahead and create your uh, main but uh, main.py file however you want to open it in vs code whatever you do and then go ahead and open that in your in your code editor so i've got here my import i've imported requests and i've imported print from rich and this is my token for my store for the app that i created earlier that i'm going to use as a demonstration the next thing that we're going to need is our url which in my case is this. Note that it's not the other way. It's not the other way around. A lot of Shopify modern ones are like this. This is this old school way here, slash admin API. This is the API version, orders.json. Now I'm gonna to go to the documentation and over here you can see this is the endpoint that I've gone for, except I've changed the status of any. If I scroll down, status, we have these options here. Now I think I need open. Mine actually says unfulfilled. That was working, I'll change that in a minute. Now I'm gonna create a variable with the SKU, and this is gonna be the SKU that I want to match when I go through this data. So then we're gonna create our request. So we need to create a request to the URL that we got from the, uh, the Shopify um, API documentation. And this is the header that's going to attached to all of our requests here, the X Shopify access token with the token that we created from the store. This is gonna give us access to our store via our, our Python program. Then I'm gonna go ahead and loop through all the orders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you over here that we have a, a, a JSON response. Now I'm gonna show you this one here. Reopen and close order. No, I want the list, retrieve a list of orders is what we're gonna do. Now you'll notice that over here on this side, this is actually a uh, list within the orders. So what I'm doing is I'm loading this JSON into Python, which becomes a dictionary. And then I have a list of orders. That's where this comes from for order in response, JSON orders. So then I can go ahead and do for item in order line items. And if I scroll down here, this isn't very useful. I'll make this bigger. Here we go, that's, that's what I wanted. So we're inside now this list of orders. If I scroll down, there's quite a lot of data. In fact, it's all of the data for every, every piece of information that Shopify holds against this order. So keep that in mind. Somewhere down here, we have our line items. Here we are, line items. And you'll notice that this is now another list of essentially dictionaries that we want to go through. So that's why I have for item in order line items. Now I'm gonna apply the logic. If the item SKU, which is here, item SKU, where is it down here? If the item SKU matches the SKU that I've set up here, we're going to then print out the order ID, the order customer email. So this just comes from the customer part that I showed was up here earlier, and that's pulled out that piece of data. So that's it. That's, that's exactly pretty much what I did that first time around that piece of code, and uh, that I didn't 
It was as simple as I could make it. There was absolutely no need to overcomplicate this. This is all I wanted to do. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to change this from unfulfilled to open. I think open is correct. And we're going to come over here and I'm going to run this code now. And you'll see that I picked up two order IDs with that um, actual email address there. And I'm going to do is I'm going to change my code ever so slightly and I'm going to look under order for the reference order number I think let's try so let's do order number here cool there we go so now this order number is these orders here four and five four and five so if I change this to a different SKU run it again we get one and two and if I was to change this to match we're going to get one and two. So what else can you do with this? You can get access to any of the information for the orders is all on here. And as I showed you, this is just read. So we're not doing anything. This is not going to break anything on the store as long as we just read the data. Uh, so you could then put your own logic in here. So if you're not interested in the item, you're interested in discounts. Discounts is in here somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's in this piece of JSON. All you need to do is that's current total discounts, for example. All you need to do is pass this as a dictionary, pull out whatever bit of information you want to check against something, and then do this. And all I would do is I would print these out to my terminal and just copy and paste this information and send it on to whoever needed it. So how can you apply this to your job or your situation? Well, you'll need access to the system's API. I've shown you how simple it is for Shopify, but if you Google the name of the system and use API, then hopefully some documentation will come up. A lot of the new modern systems have a section in your account where you can actually just create API keys and outside of rate limiting they really don't have many restrictions on what you can do. In some cases you might need to reach out to your rep to, have to get access but I found this to be is becoming less and less common. So grant yourself read access, read it, read through the documentation, use requests and JSON in Python, send an automated request and then pass that data in your script. And from there, it's just like working with any normal Python dictionary, so you can loop through and filter as you need to. And as you get better and better and more confident, you can learn to make post or patch requests, which will let you modify the data in the system too. And this is what I do almost all the time. And as of now, I run maybe 10 to 20 scripts daily across multiple systems to pull and analyze data, check conditions and update things. None of this is complicated code and it all runs on a simple server, although you can just run it on your computer if you want to. Some of these I can't actually do manually either, but even excluding those, this is countless of hours saved, which I can put towards watching Twitch, I mean, working on other projects. If you're looking for automation to help out, but don't have access to a REST API, this video here has another solution for you.